Welcome to the Osmosis Daily Report on the Coronavirus Pandemic. I'm Dr. Isha Desai. I'm a Chief Medical Officer here at Osmosis. I'm also a Pediatric Infectious Disease Physician, and I used to work at the CDC in the Division of Viral Diseases doing virus outbreak research. Today we're going to talk about children and COVID-19. To start us out, I want to take a look at this MMWR from the CDC on coronavirus disease and children. And what I wanted to show you is that among the 150,000 or so, just slightly shy of that, reported cases that they looked at in this MMWR, roughly 1.7% were among children aged less than 18 years of age. And if there's one silver lining, if you could find one good thing about this COVID-19 outbreak, this pandemic, it's that it hasn't affected children the way that it has affected the elderly. In fact, I think we'd all be responding to COVID-19 quite differently if we knew that it was causing the same levels of disease and death that it does among the elderly. And there's a nice review from The Lancet where they actually reviewed 36 cases of children with COVID-19. And of those cases, they found that 17 of those uh, children had mild clinical symptoms. They actually grouped together 10 that had no symptoms as well as seven that had acute respiratory symptoms like a runny nose or a, a bit of kind of nasal congestion. And so the general understanding has been that basically, and this is a Viewpoint article, uh, when children get it, they develop generally mild symptoms. And the real concern should be that if children are infected but asymptomatic, they could still serve as a source of transmission to adults. That, that kids can get it when they're out and about with other kids or other families bring it home and then get adults or even elderly folks in the home infected with the disease. And in fact, we know that this is where the bulk of the concern is. Now, there are some subgroups of kids to be thoughtful about. So there is this uh, paper that came out uh, in late March, look at neonatal early onset of infection. This is basically babies that are just born to moms, neonates, and they looked at 33 of them. These are all moms with COVID-19 to see how many of the neonates would develop COVID-19 as well. And what they found was that three out of 33 of these infants, these young uh, babies, within days of being born developed COVID-19. Their key finding here is that in this cohort, uh, it looks like the development of COVID-19 was maternal in origin, meaning in the thought process, and you can look through the paper in, in detail, was that there may have been intrauterine transmission, meaning while the baby was in the uterus, the virus may have gone from mom to fetus. And so in that situation, uh, what you worry about is that the baby is, is going to develop disease. And these three babies did develop disease. You can see actually on the right, the chest x-rays and the chest CT show that there's evidence of pulmonary disease in these neonates. All three of them, fortunately, did quite well and actually recovered and were uh, discharged from the hospital uh, once all this got better. And now the other subgroup, you know, we talked about neonates as one subgroup, the other one is uh, young children with underlying diseases and conditions. And so going back to this MMWR paper that I talked about, you can see that they talk about the fact that uh, a number of them, this is a total of 80 out of 345, so about 23% of these children had at least one underlying condition, and they say the most common one was chronic lung disease like asthma. So we often don't think of young children as being, as being high risk, but there are, of course, some groups of children that are at high risk. The other thing that means is that 77% of these children did not have at least one underlying condition, meaning they were healthy children that developed COVID-19. And again, I want to underscore that uh, because I think people sometimes have the misperception that really no kids can get sick, and that's not the case. They also do mention that there are three deaths that were reported uh, that were thought to be due to COVID-19, they're investigating those deaths. There have been deaths that have been well reported to be related to COVID-19 among children. So I also want to make sure that that is not a misperception out there either. Specifically, children can and have died of COVID-19. But the question remains, why is it that children in general aren't getting as sick and aren't dying at the same rates as the elderly? And this paper tries to get at some of these reasons in the context of ARDS. So you can see that this was published before COVID-19, but some of the lessons I think apply to COVID-19, and that's why I wanted to share it with you here. Just to set this up properly, what they did was they enrolled individuals that had ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, and they put them into different age groups. So four different age groups, uh, less than 28 days, 
young children between one month and 18 years, adults, and then finally uh, the elderly, people over age 65. And they had all of them uh, undergo a BAL. And a BAL is a bronchial alveolar lavage. And you can think of it as essentially a lung washing. They put fluid in the lungs and then they pull the fluid back out and they test that fluid. So that lung washing gives you a sense of the chemicals uh, and the uh, cytokines that are in that fluid uh, being representative of what's happening deep down in the lungs. They then compared all that fluid to each other to see if there were differences in the chemicals they're seeing in young infants versus the elderly. Now what they found was that levels did differ between age groups. They said levels of myeloperoxidase IL-6, IL-10, and P-selectin were higher as you got older. And IL-6 in particular is one that we know seems to correlate quite strongly with bad outcomes with ARDS related to COVID-19. So it, it looks like with younger in individuals, uh, the chemicals in their lungs are actually a different profile from what you're seeing in uh, the adults. And there's this phrase, cytokine storm. And so what it means is that the kids, the younger individuals, are not having the same sort of cytokine storm that you see in older individuals, and maybe that's why they're not having the same bad outcomes with COVID-19. This is the key figure from that, and you can see the key at the bottom, uh, white, light gray, dark gray, and then kind of darkest gray or black, represents the different age groups. And just showing you very quickly, the myeloperoxidase in IL-6, I'm just gonna focus on IL-6 for a moment, because that's the one I flagged earlier, you can see that generally speaking, there is a trend towards having higher levels, uh, and this is a logarithmic scale here on the, on the y-axis, having higher levels of IL-6 as you get older and older. So this is at the moment the leading theory as to why kids are not getting as sick with COVID-19, is that their cytokine profile is just different, and they're not having these storms that these elderly folks are having when they get the virus. Mm. All right, well, thanks for tuning in. I hope you uh, hit the red subscribe button and also the bell icon below to get more daily updates. Check out osmosis.org slash COVID-19 to see all of our free resources. And remember to do your part to raise the line and flatten the curve. We're all in this together. Thanks.